Where are you in the build out? How's it been going? We're being hit with Omicron. There are still power problems. How is all of that feeding into your build out? Hi, Alex. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, it's going really well. Uh, we are a, a, a proposition that has uh, managed to get planning permit in world record time in, in, in uh, the northeast of England. Uh, it is one of the few propositions in Europe right now that has planning permit and is shovel ready to go. Looking at the uh, macro climate, we have about six, seven gigafactories in Europe operating today. We have over 100 gigafactories operating in China. So by localizing the supply chain, front loaded with renewable, we are in a very, very unique position to offer one of the greenest batteries in Europe. The, the question is, all right, as we work our way forward, uh, good evening, it's Guy. Um, how are you gonna fund the expansion plan? Now, a lot of people are looking at you trying to figure out exactly what your plans are in terms of a listing. Uh, the latest I understand is you're, you're looking at London, uh, you're looking at a direct listing, but everybody's trying to find out the timing involved in that. What can you tell us? Break some news for us. When is that <laughs> going to happen? So uh, in terms of funding, I mean, we live in a, in a, in, in a world where, where we are paving our way through a industrial revolution, the fourth industrial revolution, uh, having ESG at the heart of our strategy, we are very uniquely positioned with funding. Uh, we have multiple funding streams available. In terms of listing, we're not looking to list a company because we are seeking further funding. In terms of listing, we're looking to list in order to showcase the ESG standards that the company stands for. Try to set the benchmarks in creating and building and producing the greenest batteries and one of the greenest batteries in Europe. We're fully front loaded with renewable. So looking at the British Fuel proposition, it is a very interesting one. Following on your question, Guy, in terms of listing, obviously looking at the name of the company, British Vault, it does belong on London Stock Exchange. So we are looking to list a London Stock Exchange within the next six to 12 months is my hope, but you never know, markets change, go up and down. As you accurately mentioned, we do have another wave of, of the COVID mm -hmm. virus. However, the team has been exceptional in pushing the proposition forward. So six to 12 months, maybe for a listing uh, in the UK, in terms of funding in August, you, uh, excuse, yeah, August, uh, Glencore acquired a stake in British Volt. Who else are you talking to? A big part of that is securing Cobalt. So what other kind of companies are you talking to? Oh, we're talking uh, to companies and funds across the board. It is very important, looking at the proposition in terms of where we are today, to uniquely, uh, but more importantly, tailor our partners in terms of the investors that come in. Uh, there is a shortage of supply for green batteries. There's a shortage of supply, bearing in mind the rules of origin that are coming into play. So being a European proposition, we might not be as interested in OEM investors, instead looking at the supply chain, trying to reinvent the supply chain, trying to remove that embedded carbon footprint within the supply chain. And I think the Glencore transaction really amplifies what British Vault is looking to strive towards. In terms of how the chemistry is gonna develop uh, and the, the green battery that you talk about, how do you see progress? How much progress are we going to see in terms of capacity? Are we heading anytime soon towards solid state? What is your sense uh, of the, the rate of change we're seeing in battery technology? Oh, battery technology is developing on a daily basis, and, and, and we're blessed in many ways for, in, in terms of British Vault because we managed to tap into an ecosystem that is second to none globally. From a British Vault perspective, we're looking at the more high energy uh, intense part of the, 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 the batteries. We're, we're looking at the, the LFP going towards LMFP uh, strategies and in terms of chemistry. But more importantly, looking at the UK ecosystem where the actual battery was invented, the lithium ion battery in Oxford University in the late 80s, early 90s, that ecosystem is second to none. So Aurel, before we let you go, I want to understand how quickly 
you think that you can get these batteries to market. There's a huge issue with supply versus demand, as you've mentioned, and government policy is sort of incentivizing demand, and there's just not the ton of supply. And we're also talking about charging stations, et cetera. How quick can you get it? How much can you produce? So we have to bear in mind uh, the front end capex in terms of lithium ion battery production is very heavy. Uh, the, the facilities, they need to be large. Looking at the British Vault facility itself, as you mentioned, uh, it's about 50 football pitches. It's the fourth largest building in the UK. It will take some time to build it. We're looking to hit production by quarter one, going into quarter two, 2024. We're looking to produce approximately 30 to 40 gigawatt hours. In terms of process engineering, we're still doing a lot of miracles on a daily basis. We are very, very well positioned as well in terms of the green aspect of the batteries mm -hmm. because we sat on the national treasure. We're fully front loaded with renewable, green electricity, green electrons going into these factories. So from a British full perspective, we're looking at a very interesting market that is stimulating demand and British Vault is looking to match that demand with supply. 